sidetrack. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're so sweet. And so wee. Why isn't the door opening? Because I had the hours set for like winter hours. So the oh. sun was coming up an hour later. So it was opening earlier. at seven. Yeah, now it's gonna start opening at six. It'll open here in a minute because it takes a second for the, once I set the new time, it'll take a second for it to change. Look at that sweet little wee baby. <laughs> little frizzly baby. Hey, little homie. So I showed you guys last week how we had all the millifloors and the frizzle bantams in the broody apartment which allowed these tiny chickens to become acclimated to the rest of the flock and they've now been out with the flock for a few days and there aren't any issues with pecking order they're not getting picked on anytime you're trying to transition younger chickens into being with an older flock you don't really want to just throw them in there because the pecking order can get kind of brutal especially if you've got chickens that are so much smaller and these are really tiny breeds not only are they young chickens they're young chicks they're also tiny breeds they're going to be just about a third of the size of a regular hen when they're full grown so it was really important to not let these get picked on because they could easily be killed and uh, the broody apartment thing and allowing them to get used to each other on opposite sides of a barrier meant that they've kind of acclimated and you can do that by putting we've done like a dog kennel before putting chicks in like in the coop and make sure they have food and water in the dog kennel once they're fully feathered just giving them a few days where the older flock can get used to them and this sure is pretty though it's beautiful Sir, the weather is back there peeing on his face behind me while I talk about chickens. He's like, oh, you want to talk about chickens? I'm not going to talk about goats. I'm not going to talk about him peeing on his face. I'm going to go dig potatoes. Jeremiah said, hey, come look at these really cute chickens. And I abandoned my coffee and my potato digging. Mornings on the farm are so loud and lovely. My pigs are back there shouting because they see me. I'm not out here to feed them. I'll get fed here in a little bit, but they're like, the people. The people are here. Good morning, pretty girls. Good morning, my little dumplings. You look so beautiful being backlit by that sun. So here's what's going on with my potatoes. They're starting to really die back, back in this area. This variety, which is the Austrian Crescent, they have blight really bad. Um, I'm assuming that's what this is, is blight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of those out. All these plants, what's left after I pull the potatoes out are all being burned like right now. I'm gonna pile them up and uh, we're gonna burn them because anytime you have sickness in your plants like this, you want to destroy that so it doesn't spread. And I don't want anything that these are carrying to make it back into my tomatoes because they're in the same family. And so they can actually spread their yuckiness to one another. Uh, because they got sick, my potatoes may be just slightly on the small side. I don't expect they're gonna be that small. Because a lot of the plants are just like naturally dying back. It's time to dig them. They've been in here since March 26 was the day I planted all of these. They're, de they're determinate varieties, which means that uh, they're done in about 60 days. So it's just time um, and that's okay. Ooh. You ready to dig? You ready to dig? All right, I'm a little out of breath because this is kind of a workout. But I'm at the end of this row and I kind of just want to show you guys what this looks like and talk a little bit about the method that we use to grow these potatoes, which I'm very happy with. And I will definitely be repeating this way of doing things. So there's what I've dug so far. I actually have that end and then some here on the side of this row. So this was about a 20 foot by four foot hill that had three rows of potatoes in it. Um, I planted I think 10 or 10 pounds of seed potatoes and already harvested probably 
that's probably 30. And then down here, I just moved the straw out of the way. So what we did is mounded this up and just very shallowly planted the potatoes and then piled about what started is about eight to 12 inches of straw in different places and it ended up packing down. But what's happening now is I'm moving the straw out of the way and potatoes are right on the surface, which is really nice for digging because I don't have to go super deep. I am I am checking deep to make sure I'm not missing anything, but for the most part, they're, they're primarily right on the surface. So here's a few plants. There's one, two, three, four, five plants right here. And you can see as I move the soil or the straw out of the way, I've just got potatoes all over the soil and all I really have to do here to get them up is pull the plant up, shake, shake this and I just pull them off the root system here and then very loosely with this digging fork here just kind of turn that soil over and it it reveals the rest of them. It's really actually pretty simple because these were planted in these hills and it was heavily mulch, this soil is not at all compact. I'm compacting it a little bit right now, walking on it, but even still, it's staying pretty loose underneath. And what I think that I'm gonna do is take some of the potatoes that I have that have sprouted. Some of these have sprouted, and I actually was watching Danny on Deep South Homestead, and he was saying that this Adirondack Blue, that some of his did that, they had already started sprouting. And I think I may just plant some of them back in this soil because I don't have another plan for this. That might not be advised, considering these potatoes had some sickness. I don't know, I need to think about it. I have a unfortunate stubbornness that has plagued me all my life that sometimes I just have to learn things for myself. Leads to great heartbreak and great discovery. So <laughs> we'll see. I may uh, replant, but I'm gonna go ahead and dig the rest of these out for right now and then I'll decide what I'm gonna do. It's just one row though. I have two more rows, two different varieties. What do you think, Bear? So I just dug the first row. This is all the Adirondack Blues. Um, I think I was pretty thorough and then I got them all out but I may come back over it one more time right now however I want to go ahead and dig that second row of plants the ones that have the blight on them so I can get them out and get those plants burned I'm probably not gonna have time this morning to dig the third row the Sun's just starting to make its way up uh, to touch the garden and so I, I want to get these out of here and get myself out of the sun so I don't bake out here. So I'm gonna get started on that second row and then I'll show you that. Those, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put directly into a bucket because I think I wasted a lot of time like throwing all of these over here and walking the plants over. So I'm gonna start on the end and kind of just fill them into a bucket and see uh, how quickly I can get that done. This is pretty cool though. Uh, that's a lot of potatoes. And I'll tell you this, tomatoes are hands down my favorite thing to eat. And everybody always asks me, what's your favorite thing to grow? I think potatoes are getting up there on the top of the list because this is so fun. Like this is the funnest thing. Now here at the end of my row, I, I think that the mulch wasn't quite as thick and the soil had gotten a little more compact. Those were definitely harder to dig out. But where the soil is nice and loose, this is like a game. I mean, a hard game that's a little sweaty to play, but like totally fun and so rewarding. <laughs> All right, y'all, I've been digging potatoes for the better part of like the last two and a half hours. It's a lot of potatoes. I'm realizing that my plan to store all these in the basement because it's cool and dry, probably not gonna work. Um, I'm gonna have to can some of them. If my freeze dryer gets here in time, I'll do that. But also, um, organic gardening. I love organic gardening. I'm proud to be an organic gardener. And the fact that right now, I know that I'm digging up food for my family that has no chemicals on it whatsoever. No, I mean, I, I've sprayed zero things, not even organic pesticides on these or for fungicides. I mean, these just went in the ground and grew in compost that was developed here on our farm. That is very awesome. There are so many bugs in these potato beds that I literally have questioned everything. Like. The earthworms in this soil are, is, they literally are as big as small snakes. I've already screamed a hundred times digging these potatoes out. Massive spiders crawling over my feet. I know I'm a gardener. I love gardening. Um, oh God! <laughs> it just happened again! <laughs> 
Okay, and for those of you who say, well, just go put on shoes, listen, okay? I had shoes on, they filled up with soil. Look at that. Look at that worm. It's huge. <laughs> Oh, I saw one bug. I didn't even know what it was. I was like, what even is that? I don't know. But the whole time I'm like, healthy food for my family. Healthy food for my family. I don't like that part of nature. <laughs> so this is my last row here. Um, these are the Austrian Crescents. This is my third five gallon bucket to dig. And I've noticed with these that they're much easier because you can see them in the soil easier than the purple ones for one. And also, they seem to stay a lot closer to the root ball. So I was just going to kind of show you guys what it looked like to pull up one of these plants. So they come up. So they come up like this. And I just pull these of the roots. And then with my hands, I'm going to do this so that I can get a little bit more space and let you guys see. I just kind of gently move this away. Now it's really easy with this fork to pierce the potatoes. So I've been doing a lot of this with my hands. And then I just go ahead and get these out of the soil. It's right here. Oh, there he is. God, it scares me every time. Look at that worm. It's huge. The boys were back here catching them a second ago. Also, I'm gonna put me being creeped out by an earthworm in this vlog. Um, I wasn't filming all the other times that I screamed. Really wasn't filming the time that that giant spider walked across the, my foot and I had to ask for uh, the strength of the Lord <laughs> to keep going here. Uh, but I'm putting that in here because for real, that is my gardening experience. I hate insects. I do not like creepy crawlies. I am a girly girl when it comes to that aspect. I was a 16 year old and would call my baby sister into the room to get the creepy crawlies out of the room. I don't like that and I talk to people all the time that say why well, can't garden because I don't like touching bugs or I don't like spiders or I don't like this you know that or the other and you can garden. Um, I do not like that, but I choose at this point that my love of organic food and love of taking care of the earth and love of feeding my family well is going to override my dislike for those things. Um, doesn't make it easy, doesn't make that go away, but in those moments, I literally am like, oh, I want these potatoes, I want these potatoes, I want these potatoes. I called Jeremiah and told him I needed more buckets, but I did not tell him just how badly I needed more. I'm curious to see what he's gonna say of this harvest. Are you trying to video my reaction to all these potatoes? Yes. Yes, I am. You're not even done yet. No. Wow. I have one more row. We have successfully grown potatoes. Yeah, my plan of just sticking them in the basement is not going to work. I'm going to have to can these or something. Guys, look at this massive beetle. And these huge pinchers. Oh my goodness. Like, this was right by my foot. Five, five gallon buckets full of potatoes later. There's the burning pile of diseased potato plants. I mean, I feel a little bit like I just won an episode of Man vs. Wild. That beetle's burying its down, itself down into the soil of the potato beds. You know, I do primarily no-dig gardening, just adding compost to my no-till beds every year. And I'm thinking that there's another great pro for growing and raised garden beds where you just don't ever turn up the soil. It's, just, it's like under the sea down there. There's just the unseen world. I don't need to know. I don't need to see it. I don't need to touch it. You didn't even protect me from that beetle. You didn't even protect me. The last bed over there, those are the mm, French fingerling potatoes. They're like a red fingerling. Here I've got the Adirondack blue, and then underneath this bucket, and then in these two buckets are the Austrian crescent. And these over here still look pretty healthy. They're just starting to lay back, so I'm gonna give them a few more days. Uh, I think that they could actually benefit for a few more days. They don't have blight on them. And because the plants aren't dying back, I don't think they're ready, but also, uh, my back and legs are killing. It's been, uh, I've been out here for a few hours and the sun's starting to, it's gonna pop up over these trees. I don't have enough time to dig that whole row. 
without being in the direct sun and I'd prefer not to work like that because I just would rather work early in the morning and in the evening. So I'm gonna call it a potato day. Goodness. So I'm gonna take these in to the garage and lay them out in a single layer on like a sheet or something and give them about two days probably just to let the skins dry a little bit so they're not quite so soft. And then I'll wash them off really good, lay them out again and let them dry. Um, and then I'll be able to store them. And over the next couple of days, while that's happening, while these are getting ready, I'll probably, uh, I mean, I'll be kind of pulling some of them. I'll probably put some in the roaster oven today for dinner. But I will also be searching out some recipes and stuff to pressure can some of these because I, I feel like we're gonna have too many for them to stay good for as, I mean, as long as it's gonna take us to get through these. This is a lot of potatoes. Bear, now you're interested in those bugs? I need a shower and a bottle of water and another cup of coffee. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. <laughs> I love getting to share stuff like this with you. I bless you. Until next time.